All right, well, I have some good news. I only have two slides in my presentation. The bad news is that there's 37 builds per slide, so it's going to take a little while to get through. Um, what I want to do first is uh, I'm Vice President of Marketing for Yodel. Uh, we provide a platform called Centermark, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that is before I conclude my comments. But what I wanted to do first was to follow up uh, on what Shell had been talking about with regard to moments and provide a little public service announcement. Uh, and don't tell Google I said, oh, wait a minute, he's in the room. Um, don't tell my boss I said this. But the thing is that a lot of what we just talked about focuses on the customer's journey to you, which is somebody pulls out their cell phone and they say, I need X or Y. They start a search for it. Hopefully they see your paid ad or they see you, your organic listing. They click on that listing. They get led through to a wonderful mobile-ready website. Tells them how great you are. It has offers. It has promotions. It has reviews. It has great digital content that confirms for them that you're the right choice for the product or service they need. They click through and they become a customer. And it becomes really easy to fall into the romance of that and think, well, great. The only thing I need to do as a marketer is make sure that I'm there for people when they have that moment of need. The problem is that people don't make decisions solely on what they see on that screen. They make a decision based on a variety of different factors that have impacted them over their lives. When I train my sales guys to talk about this, one of the things we talk about is, who here has ever used a big pen or bought a big pen? Anyone? When did you decide to first start buying big pens? Oh, I was probably 11 years old. Was it their television ad, their radio ad, their print advertising? Was it the postcard you got in the mail? Was it because your classmate had one? Was it because you picked it up off a coworker's desk, you stole, stole one from someone off the subway? What was the sort of motivator that got you to start buying big pets? It was in the line in the store when I was waiting to buy something. Like, and you actually remember that? Yes. And you think for sure that's what it was? <laughs> Does everyone here remember the first moment they decided to make a buying decision of Nike, of Coke, of big pens? You don't. Because the reality is that a variety of different factors surrounded you over time and built that brand in your mind so that when it came time to take action, there was a familiarity to Big Pens when you saw them in line. Or there was a familiarity to the Coke brand when you decided to go get a drink. And so the only thing I would add to what Shell said is, there's a whole segment of outbound marketing techniques, which, by the way, I'm in a digital marketing company. We don't really focus on, but you should. And it's got to do with uh, radio, television, billboards, all the things that build your brand and market so that you can surround the customer at that moment where they make a decision, those micro moments, and then they choose you because no single channel actually creates uh, a customer transaction. It's a confluence of all of them. And so what we want to focus on is that. Now, when I first uh, decided to come and speak here, I was going to waste your time. And I decided recently not to waste your time. My slides originally were all about changes in technology, where things are headed, cool new stuff that's happening in marketing and branding. And we heard a presentation on that this morning. There's a little bit more of that here from Google. But here's the thing, in the world of franchising, it just doesn't matter. Who are my franchisors out here? Anyone franchisors in the franchisor? Okay, great. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to keep me honest. By the way, is anyone in like instant weight loss or rapid hair restoration? <laughs> Never the two things I need a discount on. Okay, uh, well, we'll make do. What I need you guys to do is keep me honest. So I'm gonna look at the people that raise their hand as franchisors. And I'm going to look at you with a stare that's somewhere in between engaging presenter and psychopath. Somewhere in there to keep me honest on the stuff I'm about to talk about. What I want to do is paint a picture for you as I see and we see, at Yodel see, the franchise landscape. Your business, the challenges, and how to overcome them. Uh, and so I don't, the, none of the stuff about what we can do in this wonderful world digital matters. Because in the world of franchising, it's never that easy. It's never as easy as saying, yeah, we should be mobile. How do you get all your franchisees to be mobile? We should have great ads. How do you get all your franchisees to have great advertising? It's a much harder challenge in the world of franchising than it is anywhere else, and so I thought we'd talk about that. So, keep me honest. Uh, at Yoda, we work with over 200 franchise networks. We've been at this for quite some time. And in talking to all those franchisors, I find great commonality in their goals. And so again, tell me if I'm wrong, but when I ask the franchisor what he cares about, what are his goals, the first thing he says is, I want to increase revenue. As Sally Struthers said, you want to make more money? Sure, we all do. And so the idea is, of course, number one goal is more money. Does anyone here disagree that you want to increase revenue in your network? Okay, good. Second, what does a franchisor care about? I want to increase the number of locations in my network. Not only because it does, it is a big factor in driving revenue, but it increases the scope and the breadth of who we are as a company and how many customers we can serve. And then finally, I want to increase satisfaction in my network. And when I say satisfaction, I mean at all levels. 
I want our customers to be happier. I want our franchisees to be happier. And I, as a franchisor, CMO, or director of marketing, I want to be happier, which is a hard, hard task. And so every single time I talk to a franchisor, we find great commonality in those three goals. There's a lot of other goals you might have. We want to increase the strength of our brand. We want to change an operational model this year. But almost every one of them feeds to these three things. You want to increase revenue, increase the number of locations, and increase satisfaction. So how do you do that? How do you increase revenue? More customers. Yeah, it's simple. If it's that easy, everyone should be able to do it. Well, all you gotta do if you wanna increase revenue is find, retain, and grow more customers. Sell more of what you have to every customer that you have. Simple. How do you increase the number of locations in your network? Anyone? More franchisees. More franchisees? But how do you convince franchisees to come on board? Part of that? I would say it's sell a better product. You are a product as a franchisor. And when you go out to uh, talk to a prospective franchisee, you're selling them a product. And the product you're selling was comprised of three pieces. A brand, because they know it's easier for them to, uh, you know, to start the business off having the power of your brand behind them. You're selling them an operational playbook, which is the guidelines, the rules of the road, that helps them ramp up that business much, much faster than they'd ever be able to do it alone. And you're providing them with support somebody that they can call a lifeline in business that they wouldn't get if they were independent and of their own. So ultimately, if you want to increase the number of locations in your network, you got to sell a better product, which means a stronger brand, a better operational playbook, and better support to each of your franchisees. Simple. Finally, satisfaction. How do you increase satisfaction in the network? Results. If everyone's doing well, everyone's happy. But it's got, it goes deeper than that. It's about sharing the decisions. It's about mutual respect. It's making franchisors and franchisees feel respected and part of the same goal and effort so everyone wins together. So every franchisor cares about those three things and that's what's required in order to get there. One step further, and this is where things start to get a little bit more tricky. If you want more customers in order to get more revenue, what do you need to do? How do you get more customers? How do you get more customers? Promote your business. Promote your business through marketing and advertising. I would add that it's local marketing and advertising. Why? Because the reason your franchises and not just a large enterprise that sells your products by mail or over Amazon is because there's some element of what you do that requires a local direct connection. Either your guys go out to a customer's uh, home or your customer comes in to your locations. So there's a local component. So local marketing and advertising is the fuel that drives getting customers into your locations, which is what drives your revenue. What do you do in order to sell a better product? Have a stronger brand, a stronger operational playbook, and stronger support? It's gotta be consistent. That brand has to be present everywhere. When you look at something like Moments, the whole idea is that I'm being bombarded with the same message, the same resonant imagery all the time. And the cumulative effect on that turns me into somebody who, when I go into the store, can't help but buy a pair of Nikes because all I see is the swoosh everywhere I go. And it's trained my brain to prefer that brand. And so your brand needs to be consistent across all your locations. The messaging needs to be consistent across all the locations. And the way in which you operate and run the business needs to be as consistent as possible across all locations. The stronger those components, the easier it is for a potential franchisee to go, yeah, I want to be part of that because they're a really strong network with a really strong brand, really great support, uh, and everything seems to be rocking and rolling. And finally, results. How do you achieve results or approve results? Data. You can't just say does it work. You have to prove whether or not it works. And I've heard many times from franchisors that one of the biggest challenges is calling up franchisees and soliciting feedback on what's working, what's not, what can we be doing to help? And the response is, is 10 people say, I love what you're doing, and 10 people say, I hate what you're doing, and you're in an absolute no-win situation. If you have data, you have something now that provides the common framework for how to have a collaborative communication with your locations. So, recap. You want to increase the revenue? You need more customers. To get more customers, you need better local marketing and advertising. You want to increase your locations? You need to sell a better product, your brand, your operational playbook and support. You need to increase the consistency of your brand and operations across the network. You want uh, more satisfaction? You need to increase results for everybody that's in the network, and that means data to prove that those results take place. But now it gets even harder, because who is responsible for your local marketing and advertising as a franchisor? You or your franchisees? Or some combination therein? And I would argue that some combination therein. You're responsible for a lot of national brand building. You're responsible for a lot of tools that they might use. But 
Hey, the rubber meets the road at the location level, and it requires cooperation and implementation at the local level if you hope for those uh, things to take effect. And I always boil it down to what I call your DFI. Because what defines a franchise network is DFI. DFI is decisions, financing, and implementation. In a franchise network, the decisions, financing, and implementation of everything you do is shared between the constituents of the network franchisor, franchisee, and between one another. And until you get everybody sharing in those decisions, the payment or financing of, of solutions and the implementations of solutions, it just doesn't work, so it requires cooperation. Same thing on consistency, who controls the brand, the actual implementation of operational playbook, and uh, the overall support levels and calls for support to corporate. That happens at the location level. And finally, data. Who solicits customer's email address? Who says, Mr. Customer, can I get your email before you go? Who compiles and, and aggregates that data? It's the locations. So once again, your job as a franchisor is heavily dependent on cooperation and communication with your franchisees. This, as I see it, we call it the space between, is the number one problem in franchising. The communication and collaboration, because if you want to achieve your goals, the paths on how to get there all lead to your locations. So how do you create a better, more communicative, communicative and collaborative relationship with your franchisees? We've been studying this for a long time and trying to figure out how to crack this code. We came up with the first solution because the pain here is so great for franchisors that it just makes it really hard for a CMO or CFO or director of marketing to go home at night and be happy. And so the first thing we developed was a drug. It was a pill you would take if you were a CMO in a franchise network when you get done with work and it would allow you at night to forget that you're a franchise CMO or director of marketing. And that meant when your kids misbehave, you didn't look at them and instantly think, that's just like one of my franchisees. So you, you didn't fall into that trap. Now the problem with the drug is, it wears off. And what we found is that by around midnight, people would come back and realize, oh, I am a franchise CMO, and tears would set in, and they'd have to go through the shock all over again of, of being a franchise CMO. And so that wasn't gonna work. And so we said, maybe we went to the root of the problem the cooperation, can we solve it there? And so that's what we set out to do is build a platform, which we call Centermark, that stands to solve the problem in the space between and create an environment of collaboration between franchisor and franchisee. How do we do it? Simple. First, Centermark is comprised of three pieces. Applications, which is the stuff you need to do, whether it be the websites, the, the digital marketing, paid search, SEO, email marketing, review solicitation, you name it. It's all those tools that you need. But there's something special about those tools. Every single one of them takes into account the idea that the tool it's not, in and of itself is not enough. It has to be built in a way that accommodates for the fact that franchisor and franchisee is gonna play a role. For example, email marketing. There are millions of different email marketing solutions you can use out there, including sending them off out of your own personal email address. The problem with most email marketing solutions is that they're built for enterprise. They're built to allow one guy like me to sit at a desk and blitz the world with personalized messages. In a franchise network, it doesn't quite work that way because your franchisees want control of your communications, franchise or communications, with their customers. They're the ones who solicit the customer emails, and they're the ones who actually engage when comes, someone comes back with a coupon that they got in an email. So somehow they need to be engaged in that email process. You can't do it alone from corporate. But franchisees don't have the time to design compelling email campaigns. They don't necessarily have the wherewithal to create something that really is great to get customers to take action. So what we did was we built an email marketing solution that says, franchisor, you set the design, the messaging, the cadence, the triggers, what sets off an email campaign, and you put them into a, basically a portal, and then you tell your locations, here they are folks, come and get them. And the locations come in and go, yep, I wanna do that one, I wanna do that one, and I wanna do that one, and here's my customer base. And they can either upload the customer files, or if you have an integrated CRM system, they can just pull from that. But that's just an example of something that's built to take into account that each person in this relationship, franchise or franchisee, plays a role. The next part of the platform is collaboration, which means doing the legwork to go out and get the franchisees on board. We do that through data. We do that through going to your conferences, sponsoring conferences. We do we set up a web portal dedicated to your brand. We do phone calls. We do email marketing. We do direct mail marketing to your locations, all to make sure that they're aware of what's available to them. And finally, and most importantly, it's a platform based on data. So it pulls in all the information of what's happened and allows you to look at one common version of the truth between franchisor and franchisee and figure out what's working and what's not. 
And we, what we hope is that those purposeful solutions break down that space between. And now all of a sudden I have applications that I can use to, to conduct local marketing effectively and easily, which will help me get, get more customers and therefore more revenue for my, my business. I have consistency because all of my locations are on board doing these things, measured by data, which means I sell a better product, stronger brand than operational playbook, which means I can increase the number of locations in my network. And I have data because all the locations are on a common platform and we're all looking at the same version of the truth, which means we can make informed decisions about what's working and what's not, evaluate our results, and everyone ends up happier participating in the network. So once again, that's Centermark driving, building a bridge, and it's really about three things, insight, applications, and collaboration. Insight, so you know what's working, you know what's right. Applications, so you can actually do the right things because you need the tools themselves. And collaboration, so you can do those right things everywhere. And I'm not that bright, but I think if you do the right things everywhere in a franchise network, it's a pretty good formula for success. Now, before we move on, I wanna apply this to the real world and ask Adam, who's from Home Team, a few questions. Now, Adam is Vice President of Marketing for Home Team. So he's gone through this struggle, folks. If we could all be welcoming, no judgments here. Remember, this is step four in his program of recovery, is that he's gonna work with us now and we're gonna have a little conversation about how things are working uh, for him in his network. So, 